Hey everyone, a really very happy Republic Day to you all. So that, let's begin this day or this video of ours with something auspicious by celebrating one of the great achievements of India that is becoming the pickle king of the world. So what is the news exactly? Let's dive into the news uh, immediately. But before that, let me inform you that this PDF is downloadable and the link is in the description below. The link is the Telegram channels link through which you can download the PDF. Okay, so the very first question that we have is what is the scientific name of Girkins? So guys, here the right answer is option A, Cucumis uh, Anguria is the scientific name of Girkins. Now, Girkins is this. This is the pickled cucumber and India has become the pickle king of the world because 15% of the world's demand for gherkins is satiated by India only. Okay, so India is exporting this this gherkin at the maximum co uh, in the maximum quantity at present. So what is this news all about? Let's discuss it in the detail. So this data has been released by Ministry of Commerce and Industry and the, according to this data in the financial year of 2021 US dollar 223 million worth of gherkins were exported and in volume it is nearly 2 lakh uh, it is ac uh, accurately 2 lakh 23515 metric tons obviously you don't have to remember the absolute term if you uh, remember it in the uh, round figure like over 2 lakh metric tons of girkins was exported by india in fy21 which is worth us dollar 223 million that would be sufficient for your examination now guys the next point of importance here is that in this year in the financial year of fy22 in the uh, in just 8 months from april to November 2021, India has already exported 114 uh, million US dollar worth of girkins. So, uh, uh, if the data of the girkin export will be calculated for the remaining months, then it is expected to cross this limit of FI21 also. But that is something to be seen because those months have not come yet. February and March is yet to come and the export data of January and December is yet is also not revealed yet. Okay. So, as I had already mentioned to you that 15% of the global demand for girkins is satiated by India only. It is exported to more than 20 countries that include many European countries, developed countries like Japan as well, South Korea and many more countries. So, India export girkins to many countries and this is the data that I have uh, taken from PIB directly. Now you need to know that girkins are exported in two forms. One is the form in which girkin is uh, in which the cucumber is covered with the acetic acid or vinegar you can say for preservation of for pre preservation of the girkin. Second form is that cucumber is provisionally preserved by applying some other kind of uh, uh, component on the cucumber. So this is the data for both of both types of uh, girkins which are exported by India. However, you just need to know the exact data that is US dollar 223 million worth in FI21 and 114 US dollar million in April to November 2021. Now guys, this was the data regarding the girkins. Now let's uh, deep, uh, let's know something about the girkins in deep, uh, in depth as well because that can also be asked from you in the examination. So this point though I have already explained to you. Now guys, Girkins, whenever you come across any question on contract farming in your ESI, particularly in your NABAD agriculture examination or your interviews also. So Girkin is one of the best examples that you can cite to corroborate your answer in the favor of the benefit of contract farming. The benefits of the contract farming is such that this Girkin has become a, a really high paid, a, a high paid crop for the farmer. Okay, so we will come to know that how much a farmer is able to earn from the girkins, but let's first know how many farmers are engaged in this contract farming of girkins. So 90,000 small and marginal farmers are uh, engaged in the cultivation, which takes place over an area of 65,000 acres. Okay, 
now guys do you need to know that the due to the contract farming also and also uh, due to the uh, participation of apida and associated agencies which undertake the entire uh, entire work for the export of uh, these uh, agricultural products with the involvement of these organizations the quality of the ghirkins is maintained according to the international standards so this is another benefit of the contract farming because whenever a company is involved uh, if the profit of a company is involved in the cultivation of a crop then obviously it works in uh, hand to hand with the uh, farmers it also trains the farmers regarding the use of fertilizers regarding the quality standards that need to be maintained in a particular crop thus the the benefit of contract farming is is that the quality of the crop can be maintained the farmers will be trained the new technologies will be adopted by the farmers because here the stake of the company is also involved the company is providing the payment to the farmers it needs that it needs that product to export or further produce another product that's why um, the contract farming helps the farmers however the other side of the coin is that it becomes exploitative in some cases where the company starts to exploit the farmers at the same time farmer also not maintain the required quality so there are both the pros and cons of the contract farming but ghirkins is one example that you can definitely cite in the favor of the contract farming if you are asked any question on this uh, on this particular phenomenon now guys the very first state of india that started the cultivation is karnataka then uh, tamil nadu andhra pradesh and telangana followed the footsteps of karnataka and they started the cultivation now this is a really important point they can very well ask you the state that initiated the cultiva cultivation of ghirkins now on an average a farmer earns rupees 80000 <coughs> of revenue and 40000 is the net income per farmer so this how uh, this much how lucrative the ghirkins is and a major share a major credit of this is this goes to contract farming as well because quality is maintained here and if the quality is maintained then only the consumers will be ready to purchase the agricultural produce particularly and you also should be aware of the fact that many agricultural products are rejected in the international markets the products that are exported by india particularly because of the high use of fertilizers that uh, that permeates into the crop itself and therefore the crop itself becomes unhealthy for consumption therefore quality maintenance is one of the pressing issues at present in the agricultural produce and the government is working on it to uh, make the products uh, qualitative so that we can export the products in the international market and grab a really significant position for ourselves the next point here is that ghirkin has a 90 day crop cycle okay so farmers grow it for two times in a year the scientific name of this crop ha i have already told you so all of these are the things from where questions can be made in your examination because questions are made in depth nowadays so let's now move on to the next question which company has developed the ai research super cluster fastest super computer in the world so the right answer is meta the parent of facebook now guys this ai research super cluster super computer has not been created as of now it is in the uh, pipeline it is being created so by mid of this year this super computer will be ready and it will be working as the fastest super computer of the world so that was all regarding this news that you need to know from your exam point of view Next question is which state has received a US dollar 125 million loan from World Bank for its social protection schemes as it is facing financial constraints so here the right answer is West Bengal so um in indian rupees it is worth 1000 crore approximately but guys beware of some news articles which mention that the loan amount is us dollar 135 million which is not the case because i have verified this amount from the world bank's website only okay so the amount in us dollar is 125 million only okay amounts are also important because they can also be asked 
Now the next fact here that you need to know is that West Bengal is running many social protection schemes. Over 400 social protection schemes are there, uh, which dwell into different segments like providing the allowances to the workers, providing the pension to the olders or the unemployed people, etc., etc. So right now the state of West Bengal is facing financial constraints in carrying out the work under these social protection schemes. Therefore, the World Bank has come to its aid and given the loan worth US dollar 125 million. Now what is there uh, that you need to know about this loan news more? So the next point here is that the entire project has been termed as West Bengal building state capability for inclusive social protection. Okay. Now apart from this, uh, in December only last month, World, uh, sorry, West Bank has received a West Bengal has received a US 135 million worth of loan from International Bank for Reconstruction and Development which is a part of World Bank to upgrade its rural power distribution network. So, so these two loans are consecutively approved by the World Bank for the West Bengal state. So you need to know both of these. Now more about the world, uh, more about the West Bengal's initiative for social protection. So you need to know that in November 2021, world West Bengal has launched India's first chatbot for the public distribution system that allowed the citizens to apply online for the ration card to launch their grievances and get access to other resources uh, regarding the PDS system. So it was India's first chatbot that was launched. Next is that in the same month, West Bengal government had also launched the Dwari ration scheme to deliver the ration at the doorsteps of the ration card holders or the beneficiaries at a fixed state in uh, every month. So this is again a, a really good initiative towards the social protection. So all of these schemes are very recent. All of these developments related to West Bengal are recent. So you need to know about them. Next question is which of the following portals has been launched by the Kochi based spices board of India to connect India's spices exporters with buyers from around the world. So guys here the right answer is spicesexchangeindia.com. Now guys this is India's first virtual platform for spices export the spices exchange India and the basic purpose of this platform is to enable the buyers and the sellers buyers from the international markets and uh, sellers who are the exporters. So this platform will basically facilitate the meeting of these two uh, parties also the sellers and the buyers at the same time can discover each other uh, that which seller is selling which spice at a uh, at which rate so this kind of discovery is also facilitated at this spices exchange india apart from this this also acts as a platform for these two participants to hold meetings with each other okay so virtual meetings can also be conducted on this platform so that's all about this platform apart from this you also need to know that the chairman of this board is ag thankappan okay Moving ahead, how many states have affirmed to develop storage management applications with minimum storage specifications and integrate them with the online storage management system management portal of the Ministry of Commerce, uh, Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution? Okay, so here the right answer is 16. So let me give you a brief about this entire news, then we will go into the details. First of all, you need to know that this ministry, Ministry of Commer uh, Consumer Affairs, in partnership with the Food Corporation of India, it has developed the roadmap for launching the online storage management portal. Now from the word itself, storage, it is evident that they are going to uh, collect the data regarding the storage, but which products storage are we talking about here so it is the storage of the food grains that are used for distribution in the public distribution systems pds systems okay and also the overall food grain storage that happens in india in different states so this platform would act as a single source of information for the food grain storage across india 
Now, why is the ministry developing this? What is the need of it? First of all, digi digitalization always brings effective governance. So that's the basic idea behind this. Secondly, the benefit of this portal is that if the entire information regarding the storage is available at a, a click, at just a click in real time, then it will help the center to take informed decisions regarding the distribution of food grains, particularly in the times of emergency, like high inflation or war or etc. etc. Secondly, it will also help the government in, uh, in channelizing or planning the distribution of the food grains properly, effectively in a day-to-day -day manner also. So these are the benefits of this online storage management portal. Apart from this, one another benefit here is that uh, this portal will also provide the information regarding the storage facilities thus the government will get an idea how can it effectively manage the storage warehouses and improve the storage system so that's another benefit that will be uh, received from this portal once it will be developed now the a total number of 16 states have agreed to develop a similar kind of portal at the state level which will provide all the information regarding the storage facilities across the state and that portal will be linked with the central portal that is the online storage management portal. However, you need to know that all of these things are just in the pipeline and the expected date is March 2022. So by the March 22, uh, 22 month, the entire exercise will be complete. So that is all about this entire news, okay? Um, okay, so this, uh, this portal will also help in reducing cost of food storage and distribution because it will also check leakages in the entire process. Uh, like the hoarding system or the corruption uh, corruption in the entire chain entire food chain uh, food supply chain so that will also be in check with the help of this portal so that's really a good initiative on the part of the government to reduce corruption particularly in this area now moving ahead, recently Ministry of Coal has launched the Koila Darpan portal to share key performance indicators related to coal sector. The portal will provide information about a total of dash number of KPIs. So here the right answer is 9. Okay, now apart from this, you need not to know anything about this Koila Darpan portal. Just know that it is to share the information regarding the coal sector. Okay, and a total number of nine indicators are there on which the information will be provided on the Koila Darpan portal. Also know that this portal will be accessed through this URL that is the Ministry of Coal's website. So that is all that you need to cover from this news from your exam point of view. So here guys, I would like to end this session. I know it's a holiday, so I'm not stretching it even a single minute longer. So a very happy Republic Day. I hope that you will use this day not only to celebrate the Republic Day, but at the same time guys do, uh, do schedule one to two hours of your study as well. Okay. So thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good day. Good luck. And if you really like the content provided by us, then do subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, like this video, share it among your friends. Thank you so much. Once again, a really happy Republic Day to you all.